But let's, um, what are we talking about today? Listings, listings, listings. That's the theme of the month. Um, we're talking today about, um, you know, low inventory. And I, th I thought about two years ago, not two years ago, many years ago when we had two years of inventory on the market. I mean, you'd go meet with the client and ask them if they want to sell, you know, they want to sell their house in 12 or 24 months. And the last thing someone needed was another listing. You're like, Marty, I'd really love to list your house, but I already have five that aren't going to sell for 12 months. Can I call you in 12 months when your house will sell? And it was a buyer's market. Buyers, they, they had all the cards, especially if you had a buyer that did not have any contingencies. And we kind of talked about that before we got started. Um, if you had a buyer that had already sold their home and was looking to purchase, sellers would try to work around real estate agents. I remember when I had a client that moved to town um, and they were renting a house. They sold their house from uh, where they relocated from. People were dropping notes. This is in town, so you know the mailboxes are on the front door or a mail slot. People were dropping notes through their mail slot, going around me, letting them know they would sell their house if they were interested. People were scared to put their house on the market because they didn't want it to sit for over 12 months because there's so much inventory. And, you know, why do we have low inventory? It's a question I started asking because I've seen a lot of agents, not just here but other places, um, advertising on social media, you know, I have buyers but we can't find what they're looking for. Uh, I have a client in the 250 range that wants a 3-2 in, you know, 31820 or wherever the zip code is. Or another one I've seen is, you know, I sold all my, list, I sold all my listings in three days, you know, I'd like to sell yours in three days, do you want to, are you ready to sell your home? But I, I want to ask you, why do y'all think inventory is low right now? Any, any ideas? That's a good point too. Some, some markets have recovered a lot faster than others. Daniel? I'm still coming, <clears throat> I'm still coming across a lot of sellers that are upside down. Mm -hmm. They hadn't recovered. No, the, those I think are all reasons we are, especially this area, where we don't have drastic appreciation, where we didn't have uh, drastic depreciation either. I want to talk about a, a, a couple of those, like John just mentioned, some market trends. Oh, we talked about Phoenix City is very low on housing starts. And one reason uh, we're lagging behind in new homes being constructed in a lot of markets is just like John said. Many of the developed lots were foreclosed and we've now absorbed the majority of those lots with new homes over the past few years. and. When you've just lost a bunch of money to developers developing land for houses, you're not real interested in loaning money to people to develop land to build houses. So the banks haven't been uh, willing to ease uh, their criteria for developers. And when you look at what people are paying for those lots, they're still well below what you can develop land today. So development is, is very expensive. Investors. Um, we have a lot of people in our property management department that are renting because the values have not appreciated. But you also have a lot of investors that have purchased homes that would have sold them had the market recovered sooner. But rents have 
uh, increased more in some areas still where the market value has. So instead of selling those properties, they're still renting them and they're holding on to them. And then remodeling. Uh, there's been a slight surge in some home remodeling because some owners have gained some equity or they know that they can't find what they're looking for so they're going to stay where they are and make some improvements to the property. Then it, it, there seem to be some social barriers and I'm sure Eddie uh, can probably confirm some of these. Student loan debt. We are living in the highest period of student loan debt right now. It is, I don't even know, it's, I think it's probably a trillion. Um, it is ridiculous. But students graduating, until they pay off their student loan debt, it, it's hard to take on more. And also, how can you pay down your student loan debt when rents keep going up? You can't save as much money for down payment. And we see that with a lot of properties is uh, even when residents are moving to another rental property, just having the security deposit and to pay the prorated rent to move into another home. And Eddie did mention there, companies are trying to slowly loosen up some of these restrictions. In the housing crash, we were way over here where if I just maybe flash my ID at you, you'd give me a loan. You now you really didn't have to sign anything and now we've swung all the way to the other side where you need a, a really solid credit score and a high credit score. Um, so lending requirements are still tight but they're, they're trying to loosen up some. And yes, I made this one up, moving paralysis, but I think it's true and I'm sure you all have talked to folks Sellers are fearful their home will sell fast. I would love if my home would sell fast, but that forces them to make a really quick decision and they're not adequately prepared for that. Because then they get fearful about having to be on the other end and competing with multiple offers on a home they want to purchase. And they may not win that home. So they're questioning, well, you know, where am I going to move? If my home sells in two or three months, they're not prepared to deal with the current market conditions. I have some news for y'all. It is always the same, whether it's a buyer's market or a seller's market. You can't be on the same side of the fence. If you are a seller, and it is a seller's market, which is what we're in now, you are going to be a buyer if you purchase real estate, and you will succumb to the same terms and conditions that the buyers are faced with when purchasing your home. So we have to find ways to prepare them for that and it's not easy but we have known that this day was coming for a very long time and you have to understand we didn't get here overnight this all started happening uh, just a little over five years ago as we were coming out of 2011 which was a terrible year but things have slowly gotten better you know people are becoming more confident uh, some folks are coming out from under their home. People are saving money. People still are going to buy and sell homes wherever they are. Um, but we have to find ways to help buyers and sellers understand what someone like them should do in a market like this. Because it, mentally and emotionally it can affect them in many different ways. So you're probably wondering, well, thanks a lot Reynolds. You just really made me excited about real estate. Um, he gave us a lot of challenges to face. Well, what can we do about it? In two weeks, we are going to dive deep into a lot of strategies and ideas on how you can stay competitive in this market and help your clients face these challenges. Because we helped them do it, you know, in a down market. It's a good market. It's just a little tight right now. So we have to focus on what we need to do to get those listings and how we need to get those sellers comfortable with the conditions of the market when they sell those homes and what they'll be faced with. Because that's what we do. That's why we get paid. And we constantly have to refine our tools and our skills in helping our clients adapt to the current market conditions that we're in today. So 
in two weeks, we are gonna have some great ideas and strategies for staying very competitive with which y'all already are in this market, but being more competitive and how to turn up the notch a little bit against the competition when there's low inventory. Because that's where really great agents shine. And that's what sellers are looking for in a market like this. It's not that hard to sell a home if you price it right and it's prepared. But it's really hard to prepare that client for what will happen as soon as the sign goes in the yard. That's where the real hard work begins. And that's what sellers are looking for. There are plenty of listings out there, but those sellers are looking for someone that can help them navigate the opportunities that they're going to be faced with during the market conditions that we're in now. So we're gonna have some great ideas and strategies and have a good discussion in two weeks about what you can do about low inventory.